Hi, Math 215 students. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of section 1.4. We'll talk about when the equation ax equals b always has a solution, no matter what b is. The outcomes for this video are as shown here. You want to define what it means for a set of vectors to span Rm and explain the connections between the number of solutions to ax equals b and whether b is a linear combination of the columns of a. So to start off with, our question that we'll look at is how many solutions can ax equals b have? We have a matrix vector equation here, and if we are trying to solve for the vectors x that make the equation true, how many possibilities could there be? Well, we've been talking in the last uh, little bit about connections between many of these questions. Uh, we saw that the matrix equation ax equals b, or the existence of a solution to that, is connected to the existence of the solution of a vector equation, or being able to write b as a linear combination of certain vectors, or the uh, solution to a linear system of equation. And so uh, we know that if you have a linear system of equations, there can be either no solution, or one solution, or infinitely many solutions to that linear system, depending on the, uh, the details of the system. And so maybe we would expect that there should be either zero solutions or one solution or infinitely many solutions to the matrix equation AX equals B. Well, here's a theorem that explains some of those connections, uh, connecting our matrix equation AX equals B to some previous concepts. We'll say that if A is a matrix, which has columns A1 through AN, and uh, these columns come from Rm, then the equation ax equals b has the same solution set as the vector equation x1a1 plus x2a2 plus dot 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 plus xnan equals b, and that has the same solution set as the linear system whose augmented matrix is formed from the columns of A augmented by the, that column vector b. All right, so you, we have the same a solution set for all three of these uh, problems. And so um, this is going to be a little bit different from normal uh, equations involving numbers and multiplication. If we were to look at the equation 3x equals blank, and we were to fill that blank in with a real number, would the equation have to have a solution no matter what number fills the blank? For instance, if we were to put a 7 in there, and start with the equation 3x equals 7, does that equation have a real number solution? And of course the answer is yes, uh, 7 thirds is what we would get. We would just divide the 3 onto the 7 and, and we'd be done. If we plugged in a minus 6 here, would there be a solution? And there again, yes, we divide both sides by 3 and x equals minus 2. And so if we were to fill in the right-hand side with any real number, there will always be a solution to this equation. And in fact, there will be exactly one solution. It will be unique. On the other hand, if we have the equation ax equals b, and we want to know if it has to have a solution, no matter what's on the right-hand side, um, the answer will be a little bit different. It won't always have a solution. There won't always be exactly one solution. See this, let's take a look at uh, the coefficient matrices of different linear systems. So imagine that these are the coefficient matrices. Uh, they're not the augmented matrices. The augmented matrix would need an extra column on the end. But can we tell just by looking at these coefficient matrices if there will always be a solution no matter what the augmented matrix looks like? And as you take a look at these, Maybe you'll see a difference between these that might give you a little uh, thing to think about. In the left-hand matrix, remember that there is a, a pivot position starting each of these rows. And so the pivot positions all fall before the last column of an augmented matrix. In other words, we're going to be able to solve exactly for x1, x2, and x3 if we were to row reduce and, and get down to reduced echelon form. On the other hand, take a look at this uh, coefficient matrix on the right. Here we've got a row of zeros, and if we had an augmented matrix here, it's possible 
that there might be a pivot position in the uh, last column of that augmented matrix because it's certainly not a pivot position. Um, there's not a pivot position happening in the uh, columns com uh, corresponding to the coefficients. All right, and of course, if there is a pivot position in that last column of the last row, we know that there would be no solution uh, to the uh, linear system with that augmented matrix. Okay, so these two matrices correspond to A falling on the left-hand side of the equation, and we'll see that either there might be exactly one solution if B is chosen in a certain way, but if A is just a little bit different, then certain Bs are going to lead to there not being a solution. So how many solutions can there be? Well, it depends on A and on that vector B. So if we were to form the augmented matrix we've been talking about, the columns in the beginning would come from the columns of A, B would appear as the last column in that uh, augmented matrix, and if we end up row reducing and we get a row that looks like this, where we have zeros in all of the entries except in the last spot where C is a non-zero number happening in that last column, then that would mean that there's a pivot position in the last column, and that tells us that there is no solution. So we're going to look at whether there's a pivot position in every column but the last, if there is a pivot position in every column but not in the last column, then um, we would know that there is exactly uh, one solution. If there is a column without a pivot position, uh, that will correspond to a free variable. And as we've seen in past videos, that tells us that there would be infinitely many different solutions. So again, like in those other problems, the equation AX equals B can have zero or exactly one or infinitely many solutions depending on what A and B are. Okay, moving on, let's take a look at a specific example. Say we have the matrix A shown here on the left and we're going to let B be just a generic vector. We're gonna leave variables as the entries b1, b2, b3, and we want to know is the equation ax equals b consistent for all vectors b? So in other words, will there be a, a solution to ax equals b no matter what b1, b2, and b3 are? Now if that's not the case, then we ask when does a solution x exist for the equation? What has to be true about that vector b in order to guarantee that a solution exists if it doesn't already always happen? Well, to answer this question, what we'll do is uh, we'll reduce the augmented matrix. So we'll attach b to the matrix A. We'll take a look at how to start row reducing. We'll isolate that one in the first column. We'll uh, do the row operation shown there. And because we're taking minus 2 times row 1 plus row 2, um, when we take that last column, we'll have minus 2 times the B1 plus B2. That will become our new last entry for B2, for row 2. Now, if we continue, uh, we'll take that matrix, and then we'll take minus 5 times row 1 plus row 3, and then taking that and adding that down. In the last column, we'll have minus 5 B1 plus B3. And then finally, we're going to want to uh, create a zero in that second column in the last row. And so we'll take minus two times row two and add that to the last uh, row. And as we do that, we're going to end up with minus two times this last entry that will create a positive four B1 minus two uh, B2. And we add that to the bottom row and we end up with what looks like it could be a pivot position if we're not careful in that last column. Now, as you take a look at this, uh, you see that whether this is a pivot position or not depends on whether this quantity equals zero. And if B1 and B2 and B3 are not chosen carefully, this thing could end up not being zero and there would be a pivot position in the last column. So, to summarize, 
the equation is not consistent if that entry from the last row is not equal to zero. If that entry is equal to zero, if we choose b1, b2, and b3 just right so that this equation is true, it is equal to zero, then there would be a row of zeros. We would end up having a free variable corresponding to the third column. There would be infinitely many solutions. But if this ends up not being zero, this last entry, then there's no solution at all. So what went wrong? Um, it just depended on whether there ended up being a pivot position in the last entry. And we're going to summarize this in the following way. Suppose that A is an M by N matrix. The following statements are equivalent, meaning that if one is true, then they are all true. If one is false, then they are all false. Now here are the statements. For every vector B in RM, the equation AX equals B has a solution. Every B in RM is a linear combination of the columns of A. The columns of A span RM, or the columns of A generate RM. And A, the coefficient matrix, has a pivot position in every row. Now remember, we're not saying that these are all always true. In fact, we've seen situations where there might not be a pivot position in every row of A, the coefficient matrix. What we're just doing is saying that if one of these is false, then actually they're all false. So for instance, is if, if this entry ends up being non-zero, so there ends up being a pivot position in the last column of our augmented matrix, then that means that there is uh, not going to be a solution to the equation AX equals B for that particular B. All right, that's our connection there between uh, the number of solutions to AX equals B and whether B is a linear column, a uh, linear combination of the columns of A. If you have questions, uh, please let me know, and I will see you in the next video.